The board could not be higher. And we see Magnus Carlsen there, the world champion. He's been scuffling. He's on two out of five. And he tried to defeat Jordan Van Forst with the black pieces. He unbalanced the game successfully. But the Dutch Grandmaster held his own. And we are about to get a peaceful result in this game. Magnus has initiated a repetition of moves. You have your rook B1 check. Kind of like we thought. King C6. And the rook will come back to A1. King will come back to B7. And on and on we go. On the merry-go-round, we're about to get a draw. Yeah, we are. And King goes to C7. The rook will just keep on checking the king for as long as it can. And uh, there you go. The players will probably be playing these moves quite quickly from now on. But no, Jordan is taking his time. He's considering every possibility. It would be funny, Not right? Totally we'd be kind sure. of... Sure. <laughs> we well, we've been kind of joking a little bit that it's Magnus. Well, not joking. We've been kind of assuming that uh, Magnus is the one playing for the win. I do wonder whether Jordan is actually going to put his king on d6 and say no, no, no draw for king you back today. To d7. But the king back to c7. King d6. King d6 probably was losing to rook a1. Uh... Um, but it's always worth double checking with as much time as they get on move 40, which is 50 minutes to be exact. You've mm -hmm. got enough time to. Triple check. Jordan kind of looking over at the arbiter, saying, All right, come over here. We need to claim the draw. We've got a draw to make. Agnes Carlson. Jovi is going to stay on minus one through six rounds. He does not succeed in pulling out one of his vintage endgame wins. And I think all credit should be yielded to Jordan Van Forest. He held his own, he held his composure. And particularly, I'm impressed with how he handled. The final stage of this endgame, after Magnus played Bishop d5, that rook endgame was not easy to navigate, and he did so with confidence and with verve, and Magnus never really had a real shot at winning the game. No, he uh, played with great accuracy, and I also kind of want to highlight the moment where he played b4. I mean, it was a move that took me by surprise, but once it was on the board, it made perfect sense. It was a simplifying move, it made his position easy, and uh, like, I, like you kind of said, he's handled the last stages of the game with 100% accuracy. Just complete perfection yeah. there. It is not easy to play a move like that against Magnus Carlsen. We talk about the Magnus effect so often. The subconscious desire to play it safe, uh, to not take risks if you're his opponent. But Jordan, he's worked for Magnus. He knows him very well. And he's just a, he just strikes me as someone who believes in his own skill. Jordan has won Tata Steel. And as we see them analyzing the game, we talked about this yesterday. I love this particular site. Just the site of the players sharing critical moments after the game and being friendly to each other. This is what professional chess is all about. Brutal competition during the game. But professionalism and uh, just warmth after the game. Yeah. And yeah, I have this kind of philosophy, chess is chess, life is life. And as soon as the clock stops, I mean, you just have to go back to normal. You have to go back and just shift that warrior mindset 